Mr. Vino, on November 19, 2021, CSIS issued a classified analytical brief to 35 Government of Canada clients on the topic of the Beijing-directed APT31 cyber attack campaign. Of the 35 Government of Canada clients who received the briefing, did that include the Prime Minister's National Security and Intelligence Advisor? Mr. Chair, I do not have the, the specific um, distribution list, but I can say that, uh, generally speaking, such a product would indeed be distributed to the Privy Council Office, and that would include the National Security Intelligence Advisor. That's the general practice, but I will have to double-check on this specific item. And would that likely include uh, certain ministers, departments, deputy ministers? Uh, Mr. Chair, the, the way that the distribution of intelligence works is that the departments are responsible to uh, their, the intelligence unit within departments to then make this information available to their ministers. So it would uh, maybe, be hard for me to know. Maybe the easiest way to go about this is, uh, would you, Mr. Vino, undertake to provide a list of the 35 Government of Canada clients who were briefed? To this uh, I will do that, uh, okay. Mr. Chair. Thank you for that. And uh, on... Uh, is there anything you can uh, elaborate on with respect to that briefing? Uh, Mr. Chair, I do not have the, the specifics of that briefing, but what I can say is that um, uh, at, uh, as an intelligence service, uh, working with our partners in Canada, as I mentioned in, in my remarks, but also working with our international partners, we have seen an increase in the sophistication and, and uh, aggressive nature of the cyber targeting by uh, China, including by APT31. Thank you very much. On August 25th, 2023, C CSIS issued a second briefing, a classified intelligence assessment to uh, what in the timeline are described as relevant Government of Canada clients that referenced the AP ATP31 cyber attack. Uh, again, uh, would that have included the Prime Minister's National Security and, and Intelligence Advisor, PCO? Uh, do, you, do you know who those relevant clients are? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, my answer to this question will be uh, the same one, the same as the, my uh, initial one. So I, I can look into the specific distribution. Uh, my assumption is that it would be, but I will confirm with the committee. So you will undertake to provide a, a list of who those relevant Government of Canada clients are. Thank you very much for that. And I would note that August 25th, 2023, was after the ministerial directive, which you alluded to, was issued on May 16th, 2023. Uh, so my question is, and, and maybe before I ask that, that directive provides that, quote, CSIS will seek to ensure that parliamentarians are informed of threats to the security of Canada directed at them. Uh, why were the parliamentarians not informed pursuant to the ministerial direction? Uh, so, Mr. Chair, I think this is, goes at the core of the issue. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, in the cyber ecosystem, you have different actors with different responsibilities and mandate. Uh, we each did our work uh, in, uh, in collaboration, but also to a certain extent in parallel. And the initial information was not uh, emanating from CSIS, uh, was emanating from, from uh, our colleagues at CSE. And so we work with them to work with the House of Commons. So the, the question that you know, uh, the, the member is asking is uh, if and when would the ministerial directive apply to CSIS it is uh, an interesting one. Um, we are learning how we are adapting this, this ministerial directive. Uh, just, and, just and to, to, uh, and I don't Mr. Chair, to if I could just my, finish my, on this, yes. I would say that the, the key point here is that the assessment at the time was that the information had been shared with the House of Commons in order to mitigate that threat. Well, it, it hadn't been shared with the members of Parliament, which was the basis upon which the directive had been issued. But nonetheless, CSIS was briefing uh, Government of Canada clients that were deemed relevant, presumably the Prime Minister's Department, the PCO. And you had said that although there might be other agencies or departments who may be better suited to brief members of Parliament, but CSIS would have the role of facilitating or leading discussions around uh, arranging such briefings. So did that happen? 
Mr. Chair, I'm not sure that I would say that uh, I would see that the role of CSIS would have been to organize the, uh, the, uh, such a briefing. But I think what is clear in hindsight is that the outcome of, you know, for parliamentarians is not what anyone wanted. And so my uh, so uh, commitment to this, job, to this committee is to, to learn from this, to learn, work with the committee, learn from your, uh, your, the result of your work. And uh, in, with our partners, and I can tell you that uh, I, I was talking to my partners at CSE, we all have the same uh, objective, which is to make sure that in the future uh, we have in a, looking and we're going to achieve a different outcome for parliamentarians. And I think this is one of the role. I would say being very candid with you, working with parliamentarians through the House of Commons is something we all need to get better at. Uh, we, would, we normally go through the House of Commons. I don't want uh, members to think that this is a, uh, a cop-out by saying, you know, we share the information to the House of Commons and we washed our hands. That was not the, uh, at all the, the, the intent and the approach. However, uh, clearly, for the people who were targeted by APT 31, the outcome was not, you know, the one that people would have expected. And, and my undertaking to this committee is that, you know, with my colleagues, we will learn from this and make sure with our partners that we are achieving different outcomes in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cooper.